beautiful people. Are you ready to talk about sex? <laughs> Remember the sexy early days of your relationship? The passionate honeymoon stage when you could not get enough of your new lover? But fast forward some years, and now your love life feels more like doggy style? You know where one of you sits up and begs? and the other rolls over and plays dead. <laughs> if this is your sex life now, you are not alone and you are not broken and you can change this. Low desire and low libido is the number one sexual challenge of women and a growing number of men. And there are many reasons for this. Uh, stress, busy lifestyles, parenting, aging, hormones, medications, relationship problem, pornography, and bedroom boredom, to name a few. It can happen to anyone. It happened to me, and I am a psychotherapist specializing in female sexuality. And I am very much attracted to my handsome and beloved husband. <laughs> Yet I was not immune from the hormonal crash and burn that sounds like men on pause. Fortunately, I knew that a couple's physical bond is far too important to leave to the mercy of something as fleeting, as cyclical, and as unreliable as hormones and horniness. In fact, if you are waiting for only physical cues to connect, you may be setting yourselves up for disappointment, rejection, and ultimately a sex-starved relationship, which is often usually an intimacy-starved relationship because the emotional bonds and the physical bonds go hand in hand. But this need not be the case because you can choose to consciously cultivate connection by using your mind and your heart so how do you get your head and your heart into the game? Intimacy begins outside the bedroom. So start by bringing your best self to your relationship. Do you ever notice how when you show up relaxed and in a good mood, your partner is magnetically drawn to you? Stress is the number one libido killer. Plus, a lover who is all stressed out, distracted, and up in their head is unlikely to be able to relax and enjoy lovemaking anyways, no matter what their partner may do. You can reduce your stress levels. Also, if your relationship is full of conflict, fighting, or just not spending quality time together, it's no wonder that one or both of you is just not up for it. You can learn relationship skills. You can choose to be kind and focus on what is good in your partner and not those socks on the floor. How do you get a mindset of lovers as opposed to, say, roommates? Think back to when you were dating and you wanted this person to fall in love with you. How did you look? How did you act? Were you well-groomed, well-dressed, physically fit, sexy even? Were you attentive, affectionate, flirty, romantic even? It's never too late to bring the energy of boyfriend and girlfriend back into your relationship. Prioritize your partner. Don't make them the last thing on your list when you fall into bed exhausted or have to compete with your own children, hobbies, and screen time for your attention. Plan on spending quality time together inside and outside the bedroom where intimacy is the goal and your attention is undivided, maybe with eye contact even. How about we stop stroking those phones for a moment and start stroking one another? <laughs> Plan sexy times. We have got to get over this idea that sex should just be spontaneous and just happen. In a long-term relationship, how often are you both going to suddenly feel hot for one another at the same time with nothing else to do? By planning time for intimacy, it's not only more likely to happen, but you build anticipation, which is a mood booster. You also are more likely to arrive in a good mindset when you know it's coming. So I encourage you to look forward to naked date nights.
when you plan ahead, you are more likely to slow down, slow the pace, and take your time, which equals more pleasure for both, but especially if you are a woman, because biologically and anatomically, the female body simply takes longer to get fully aroused than the male. If a man's arousal is like a microwave, zero to six inches in 60 seconds, then a woman's is more like a crock pot. <laughs> Delicious, but you gotta wait. <laughs> Open your heart and honor your bond. After all, you have likely pledged a lifetime of fidelity and monogamy to one another, and that's not only for your sexual needs, but also for all of your physical uh, affection needs as well. And physical touch is likely the love language of at least one of you, which means it is through the sexual bond that you or your partner gives and feels love. There's a classic saying that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I happen to think that's shooting about a foot too high. <laughs> Ladies, we can't blame our men for the way they are made. And conversely, gentlemen, Understand that for your woman, for her to be in the mood, for sex to be great for her, it is a mind-heart-body experience. Her, she needs to have a mindset that is at least reasonably relaxed, confident, and secure. And she would really like her heart to feel emotionally connected to yours. Respect our differences and know that your partner may just simply be looking at sex, love, and even life through a different lens. Keep intimacy, both physical and emotional, alive for a lifetime by becoming sexual explorers together, sensual teammates on a journey of more pleasure and more connection. How do you do this? by combining creativity with good communication. Bedroom boredom is a number one reason, oh, a top reason, that couples lose interest. And it's not surprising, most couples have the same old sex year after year. Yet the sexual menu is vast. I can think of 121 items. But how do you know what you might like if you've never experimented, explored? There are countless ways to add interest and variety to your bedroom, and these include things like lingerie, toys, uh, positions, locations, themes. So pick something that sounds intriguing and have fun with it, and be aware that growth comes from just outside of your comfort zone. In addition to considering something new to try, I'd like to remind you that sex is also a very emotional experience and a shared experience. So consider what is it that you want to feel from sex emotionally? What emotions would you like to feel? Maybe it's adored, playful, powerful, uh, spiritual, naughty, in control, out of control. Once you know it makes sex great for you, you can figure out how to get there. Communication. Sensual explorers know how to talk about sex in a way that feels connecting as opposed to critical or controlling. Your lover is not a mind reader. So know some things that you might like, some different kind of touch, and how to ask for it. If you don't know how, you run the risk that your partner has to guess. And what they are likely to guess is what they would like or what they saw in porn which has become the de facto sex education, yet where there is no loving, honoring, and cherishing. If you are like many of my female clients, you don't know the answers to questions like, what turns you on? What turns me on? What do I desire? What makes me feel desired? What makes you feel desired? Because you've never asked these questions or considered them. And maybe having a conversation about sex feels taboo to you, or you are afraid that you will learn that what your partner really wants is that you have a different body, a different performance, or do something outside your boundaries like a threesome. 
but that is not my professional experience. What a lover in a committed relationship wants more than anything is that their beloved truly sexually desire them and that you have a wonderful time in your lovemaking together. Isn't that beautiful? Don't believe it? Ask your partner if true for them. So for intimacy, both physical and emotional, that thrives over a lifetime, use your logic and your love, <laughs> open your mind, <laughs> honor your bond, and become erotic explorers together and have fun with it. Thank you.